My name is Nicholas Fabian, and today I'm here to talk to you about my deployable LiDAR project. If you don't know what LiDAR is, it stands for Light Detection and Ranging, and typically uses elements of light to determine the distance away an object might be, typically to map certain objects or areas out. So with this project, we were tasked with building our own LiDAR deployable sensor and deploying it all on parts of College Park's campus to map out different landmarks and turn them into 3D models that could potentially be used for a 3D print. If you're curious as to what my LiDAR sensor looked like, here we are. It features a Raspberry Pi at one end with the PiCam module, as well as an Arduino unit connected to a laser right here. The camera and the laser are actually separated about 12 inches apart from each other. And there's a reason with the physics of how this works. Both the Pi and the laser are powered using this battery pack back here. And by connecting the two, you can see that the laser is deployed right over here. And the module turns on up here, turning the camera on. And we can actually access the Pi using its IP address, connecting both our laptop and the Pi to the same network. The physics are as such. The laser projects onto an object in the field of view of the camera. The light reflecting from the laser off that object reflects back into the camera of the LiDAR. Based on where the light appears within the frame of the camera determines what angle the light is reflecting back at the camera at. We also know the set distance between the camera and the laser, which is 12 inches. Using these two dimensions, we can use trigonometry to solve for the distance that is actually between the camera and the object. Using the IMU angle and placing the sensor in one position, we are able to determine how far something is and map the signal of the laser in a 3D point cloud. Once we've done several scans, we can stitch these point clouds together and create a 3D model in MATLAB, as well as make a 3D mesh for 3D printing. The LiDAR actually had to be calibrated before we could deploy it though. Now the first thing we want to do before we scan, before we even do the calibration process, is to make sure our LiDAR itself is properly set up. First thing we want to set up is our laser, and there's a few steps there. The first thing we want to do is check how sharp the laser is. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn my laser and show it on my shirt, and my line, I've sharpened it or changed the dial on the end to make sure it's as in focus as possible. You'll know it's in focus when you get to the point where the laser is as thin as possible on whatever you're projecting it on. Once you've made it as sharp as possible, you're going to wrap a little bit of tape on the dial so it doesn't come undone and it remains in that focus for the entirety of any of your scans. Once you've done this, we have to make sure that the laser is in line with our frame. To do this, you're going to go ahead and project it on a blank wall, make sure it is level with the wall, and you're going to open your laser alignment image Pi script. Now this script has green lines with the live feed of the camera going along the distance of the frame. So by the way I set it up, this laser on the wall is now in line or parallel with the green lines in frame, making sure we're measuring it properly across the frame of the camera. Next thing we have to do is actually focus our camera. This was a problem I found when my camera became very blurry when I got to the site and I had to come home and figure out how to focus it. So I'm going to teach you how to do that right now. On your Pi Cam, if you look at the camera, there's a little dial on the end. This dial is around the lens and you're able to take some tweezers. You can actually twist the dial and look at your live feed until the image is as sharp as possible. The best way to do this, I would suggest, is turn your laser on at your wall and twist it until the laser is as sharp and thin as possible on your laser alignment image feed as it is to the eye. Once you have your laser and your camera set up, as well as everything properly assembled, you're ready to go to the calibration stage of your setup process. So by placing the LiDAR several distances from a flat surface at which the laser could be easily found using the Pi Cam, we were able to take several images from various distance and plot the location of the laser along an exponential plot. Now this plot should line up with an equation where several variables such as radians per pixel and radian offset can be adjusted so that when we deploy this, wherever the laser shows up in the frame, we have a good idea based on this calibration where the object lies in frame and in relative to distance from our sensor. So this is the calibration setup. I've tried to get my room as dark as possible, but you can see we have the LiDAR right there and we have a tape running from the wall all the way back to my couch. 
Now, I put a little rod that's about flat with the pie cam, it's actually under the tripod under there in white. That way we can measure how far the pie cam is to the ground. It's a lot harder to eyeball it, but Putting a physical prop there makes it a lot easier to measure this out. Now while the goal for getting these 3D models is to eventually have a whole map of the university, for my object, I wanted to get something that was easy enough to map, but also significant enough and maybe new enough that some student in a previous semester of this class hadn't already mapped it out. So I thought, with how new the Idea Factory is, I would go ahead and map the Idea Factory sign out on North Campus. This is located right near the Idea Factory, near the entrance in the cafe. It's about 12 feet long, which makes it extremely large for a typical object mapped with this LiDAR sensor, as it's usually only optimized for up to 6 feet of distance in the frame. So this project required several different scans in order to get the full image in our 3D point cloud. And the game plan is as follows. We go ahead and we scan several different sections of the front of the sign as well as the base of the sign, three to four different sections, splitting it up. We then go ahead and scan the sides and the corners so we get the shape of the corners around the object. Now, painter's tape was placed on the bottom of the sign at the base where these blue highlighted lines are because the laser did not reflect off of the marble very well. And it was very hard to pick out the laser even when the exposure is set extremely high. So, by placing a surface of tape on top of this at key locations, we are able to better see the light reflect back into the lens of the Pi Cam. So using this map, I went out and mapped the sign. All right, so it is currently April 24th at uh, approximately 8.46 p.m. Uh, I'm about to go ahead to campus. We're gonna get our first on-campus scan. I got everything packed up in the bag with the scanner, tripod, and my laptop. And we're gonna go set up. Should be pretty quick. Just gotta do a few one-sided scan of our target, which is the Idea Factory for right over by the Kim building and sign right there. So, gonna get a few scans of that. And there we go. This process actually took several nights as I really wasn't sure how to tackle this, but from surveying the object several times, I was able to determine the best way to map the object. After several trials, I got about 10 scans in in order to make my 3D point cloud. Processing this data into a 3D mesh was not easy, specifically with how large of an object this was. Typical targets for this project include the Testudo statue outside of the Xfinity Arena or outside the library. However, this sign is about three times the size in the front, so it took a lot of different scans that had to be meshed together in order to get a full 3D point cloud. And as you can see, even using some if statements to cycle out some pixels that may have been caused from ambient light, it still isn't as clean as I'd like it to be. So, I cheated. Not really though. I used MATLAB to plot some surfaces based on my point cloud in order to get a more defined shape. I would select different pixels at the corners and edges of the point cloud in order to get an idea of the dimensions using my scan, but make the size of the sign a little more refined. I decided to keep the front top of the sign as my scan. As you can see, some of the details, such as the University of Maryland crest, are visible in this scan, so I wanted to make sure at least those details were visible in my final mesh model. After I got the 3D point cloud I needed, I exported these points using the surfaces that I used doing the meshes, as well as the scan of the front into one text file and threw that text file into MeshLab in which I proceeded to create my 3D mesh to make a more consistent, coherent model of the sign. And there we have it. Walking away from this project, it wasn't really something that I was very familiar with. I didn't really have a lot of experience with a lot of remote sensing techniques before this class. However, this project really simplified and put the field of remote sensing and LiDAR detection into focus for me, and I think I've walked away with wanting to explore with this sensor more, maybe map a few more things out on campus, and maybe make some tweaks to my design to enhance performance. Anyway, thank you for watching my documentation of my deployable LiDAR, and have a good one.